After wholesaling for about a year, I've boiled the wholesaling process down into three phases and a few key skills. Let's talk about them. Hello, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Vena. I am a real estate agent, wholesaler, investor out here in Seattle, Washington. I do a little bit of TikTok, a little bit of Instagram, a little bit of YouTube, and a whole lot of real estate. And so today we're talking about how to get your first wholesale deal. Because if you're anything like me, when I first started out in real estate, you probably had heard a lot about the industry, maybe seen some flashy checks, heard about how easy wholesaling is to get into, how you don't need a license, you barely need money to start, but you don't know where to start. Now I've got quite a few wholesale deals under my belt and I've compiled what I know in this video to give you a step-by-step, -step, like I said, three phases into getting your first wholesale deal. Let's get into it. Real quick, if you don't know what wholesaling is or maybe you've heard a lot of different versions of what it is, the laws and regulations and contracts do vary by state and I'm in Washington, but the basic process is simple. So first step is to find a motivated seller. A motivated seller is someone who is willing to sell their property off the market below market value for whatever reason, maybe they need to sell quick, maybe they need some money fast, maybe it's too much work for them, they don't wanna listen on the market, they hate realtors, that happens. And so they would really prefer a quick and easy process as opposed to going through the hassle of listing the property and paying realtor commissions and closing costs. And wholesalers offer a service of selling the property off the market to a flipper for a fee. This typically saves the seller time, money on fees and the hassle and stress sometimes of preparing the property for the market, letting people in for showings and dealing with buyers contingencies. And wholesalers service flippers by sourcing them deals. And while there are a lot of different characters in this industry, typically when you're acting in good faith and doing good by the seller and your end buyer, you will have a lot of business and you won't have too many problems. It's true, there are a lot of shady investors who are ripping people off and lying to sellers. But the way I run my business and the way I teach my team here in Seattle is we're very transparent, we're ethical, and we're only here to solve the problem. We're not convincing anybody to sell their properties below market value. We are looking for the people who are ready to go now. So with that being said, where do we find the people? This is phase one, lead generation. So this is really the hardest part of the job. This is the hardest part for any investor is finding good deals. And when you make your job about finding good deals, you find good deals. <laughs> the most common lead generation strategies for new investors in general, whether it's a flipper, a buy and holder or wholesaler, the most common lead generation strategies and the most popular are cold calling and door knocking and sending out mailers and online ads. Those are the main ways people find sellers aside from through their own networks or database of people they know. My team and I focus on and have found a lot of success in cold calling, door knocking, and sending out mailers. I've tried online ads, it's a little more complicated. I prefer going direct to the seller. There's really two types of marketing. There's active marketing and passive marketing. So active is when you go direct to the seller and passive is when you let the sellers come to you. So things like cold calling and door knocking, those are active marketing. You can control it. The more you do, the more you earn. Whereas passive marketing, mailers and ads, you're just waiting for the people to call you. So I do both, I do a combination. I really love mailers and I really love calling and knocking. If you wanna call, I started out cold calling until I had the budget to send out a bunch of mailers at a time. I get my data from PropStream, I'm affiliated with them, I'll have their link down below. Here's my filters, I go for single family and multifamily two to four unit houses that are 1990 or older and have been owned for 12 years or more. That's it, I get on PropStream, I circle an area on the map that I wanna work, typically like your own neighborhood. I recommend starting local as opposed to going out of state because you know your own market, it's easy, you can go meet the seller, you can take the project on if you're gonna do that. It's in your own backyard, it's a lot more convenient. So I recommend starting in your own neighborhood if there are fixer houses in your neighborhood. If you live in a really nice or a new neighborhood, you might not find as many fixers. We're looking for fixers because these are the ones that we can get below market value and sell to flippers for a profit. So I'll get on PropStream, pull my list, you can skip trace inside PropStream, it's like eight or 10 or 12 cents a number, something like that, pretty cheap. I usually get a few thousand numbers for less than a few hundred dollars. And then I'll import those into a dialer. I like Mojo Dialer, I'm not affiliated with them, but there you go, triple line. <laughs> and just start dialing. You can also knock the list, you can physically drive the list. I started out just cold calling it, just to get a feel for cold calling, get good at it and build that skill. I have some clips of live cold calls on my TikTok and I have a full video on cold calling on this channel. So check that out. But it's really simple and when you're in your own neighborhood, it's a very easy conversation to have. When someone picks up, I'll just say, hey, I live in your neighborhood, I'm looking to buy properties here, I was just curious when you may plan on selling. And you go from there, if they're interested in selling, then set the appointment. If they're not interested, move on. Like I said, cold calling is a whole skill. It's important to be nice on the phone. You have to be able to deal with rejection. It's gonna happen. The thing that always got me over my fear of rejection was like, okay, I have a list of 3,000 houses in this neighborhood, right? 
what is the chance that all of them are going to sell? So of course some people are going to say no. And some people say no in ruder ways than others, but no one wants to be called by a random person in the middle of the day, but some people do because they're waiting for us to solve their problem. So that's cold calling. I like PropStream. I like Mojo Dialer. Combination of the two, killer. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars just with those two things. And then again, you can door knock that list. You can just door knock houses in your neighborhood without a list. You can do this for free. There's always just gonna be a little bit more efficient way to do it. My advice is always just find what works for you. Find your drive and lead generation strategy. Try it for 90 days, see how it goes. If it really doesn't work, go try something else. As far as mailers go, I've made a lot of money on mailers. I really like open letter marketing. They have a great postcard product. I get a solid conversion rate and their link will be down below too. Cost kind of varies, but they have a lot of different products and you can kind of browse. I think I have a discount code. Don't hold me to that because I just joined up with them, but I'll have that information all down below by the time I upload this video. So that's your lead generation. Now the point of lead generation is to set appointments. You want to get in front of sellers. Yes, you can close deals over the phone. Yes, you can get the contract signed over the phone. I prefer, and this is how I started out, to see the house in person, get my own feel for it. I'm going to be the one selling the deal, so I want to know what the product is and have a human reaction with the seller, build a relationship, get that contract signed, and get to work after that. Now here's the thing, because I get asked a lot, do I need a mentor to start? How do I get a mentor to start? You do not need a mentor to download a list of PropStream and start calling people. I do recommend you have a mentor or a helper or some kind of partner when you go to these appointments if you are totally inexperienced. The good thing is if you ask an experienced wholesaler or even a flipper to go with you on your appointment and help you close the deal when the seller is motivated, that's a golden ticket. Anyone. I would jump on that in an instant and people do bring me their deals. I help them close them and we split the profit. It's a great deal because they get to learn, they make money, I make money, and I'm happy to help them again. I've split deals where their total profit was $80,000. Half of $80,000 ain't too bad. <laughs> but remember, there are shady people out there, so you have to be able to trust this person that you're working with. And this is really why I advocate going to real estate events and investor meetups so much, because this is where you meet the people who are gonna help you through your deals, who are gonna buy your deals, and who can give you advice through your investing journey. Most areas will have investor Facebook groups. If you're not on Facebook, just get on there, because your next check could be through Facebook. That's where you can meet a lot of people and sell your deals. That being said, it's really helpful that when you find this motivated seller to have someone where you can show them the deal, share the address, see what it's worth on the market, see what it would be worth when it's fixed up, and then bring them along for that rehab estimate and to have an educated professional conversation with the seller. When you're totally new, it's really helpful to have someone who you can just hand it off to and split the deal while you learn together. It's a good idea to have either a shared LLC if you plan to have a long-term partnership with this person for wholesaling or to just have a joint venture agreement. We call it JV. Rocket Lawyer is like 20 or 40 bucks a month and they have like JV agreements and assignment contracts and all that. so. They don't pay me, but they should. And you can find a lot of good stuff on there. So we got the seller, we have a mentor. If you're a real estate agent already, it's probably gonna be easy for you to comp the property. If you're totally inexperienced, I really, really recommend you find a mentor. But if not, do your best to get on Zillow and look at what is selling in the area in a similar size of the home, what's brand new. The margin we look for on wholesales at least here in my area, is 80% of ARV. So this is the ticket. The purchase price plus the rehab costs should be 80% or less of the ARV. So really simple, if the purchase price is 700,000 and it costs 100,000 to fix it up, but it's gonna be worth a million when it's done, that is a sellable deal. If it's like 90 to 100%, you're not gonna get a good deal because there's no room there for the flipper to make their money. And if I know that a flipper is gonna buy this for 700, they're gonna spend 100, and it's gonna be worth a million when it's done, they'll make a million minus closing costs is 920, minus the purchase and rehab, which is 800, they'll make $120,000. I'll put that math up here so you can see it. And it's important to look at what the flipper is gonna make because that's who you're selling it to. If the flipper can't make money, you can't sell the deal. So if you get the property for 800 and it's 100 rehab, flippers all in for 900 plus your assignment fee and it's only worth a million when it's done, there's no cake to eat there. So in this hypothetical scenario, if the house is worth 700, 100 rehab, it's gonna be worth a million when it's done. If you get that house for 600 or 650, you can sell that to the flipper for 700,000 and they'll make their money and you make 50 or 100 grand. It's a pretty solid deal. And that is the typical range of my personal wholesale deals. My typical fee here in Seattle is around $60,000. You can call my escrow company and ask. <laughs> Speaking of escrow company, after you get your contract signed with the seller, you definitely, you have to make sure your contract is assignable so that you can sell the contract to someone else. That's what wholesaling is. You get to work finding the buyers. You're gonna put earnest money down for the seller. 
here in Seattle, I do $500 or $1,000 earnest money. Washington is an escrow state, so the title escrow company handles the funds and the contracts and the closing documents. They arrange everything for you. Literally, once they get your contract and your assignment agreement with the end buyer, your hands off and you pick up your check at closing. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So we lead generated, we found the deal and put out a contract. Now we have to sell it. How do we sell our deals? Now there are a couple platforms that you can sell your deals on that do cost. There are off-market websites. I have had a lot of success selling my deals through Facebook and through connections I built at networking events. All you need to know is as long as you got your numbers right from the beginning where the flipper will make money, you'll be able to sell your deal no problem. You can even make friends with a few real estate agents who have investor clients who can just sell the deals off. And if you have a $50,000 spread on your assignment, you can pay an agent the one or 2% commission for finding you a buyer because that's very valuable. And I've done that too. So you send it out. Once you do find a buyer, you write an assignment agreement with them that states that you are assigning the rights to purchase the property to the end buyer for an X amount fee. The buyer sees the fee and with the right escrow company, the seller won't see your fee. So wholesalers get paid by the buyer, not the seller. The seller's getting the number they want. The flipper is getting a great deal on a property off the market. They don't have to pay realtors. All they have to do is pay your fee. You get paid. Everyone's happy. That is the perfect wholesale deal. I say perfect because there can be hiccups. If you're acting shady and lying to the seller and saying that you're gonna buy the property and then someone else comes in, you might run into some awkward scenarios. What I will usually tell a seller is, I don't necessarily look like I flip houses 24 seven. So sometimes I'll say, hey, I work with investors. I'm gonna write this contract with you and I'm gonna find a buyer and charge them for the deal. And as long as the seller is happy with your price, they're usually perfectly understanding. You're doing them a big service by getting their home sold for them. <laughs> So that's the gist. Lead generate, find the motivated sellers, go on the appointment, get the property below market value. This is the key. This is what's going to make you the money. It's what price you get the property at and then you go and sell it. Then you assign it to a buyer and you get paid at closing. Of course, there are nuances and details that are going to vary by transaction and that's why it's really helpful to have someone helping you. Like I said, I'm here in Washington. I am totally open to JVing your deals. If you have something, I'm happy to take a look and help you close a deal. Let's do some deals together. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> and yeah, wholesaling is really about finding good deals. I'm not trying to create a whole wholesaling business. My name of the game is making money to buy investment property and wholesaling is just a really great vehicle to do it because compared to how much you can make in wholesaling, this takes very little effort, it's very little time, and it's a little less headache than being an agent, just a little bit. With that being said, that is how you wholesale. Hopefully it made sense and it was clear. I did my best to write this all down and make sure I covered everything that I could, but of course, comment section is open. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if it did help, if you would drop a like and subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to me. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.